Hi, my name is Edith and this is my bus, Paxi. Um, she's a Ford E350 Super Duty 2008 V10 um, and I've been living full time in the bus for about six months now. We replaced this, uh, the actual bus doors with a house front door and put little windows in it for better visibility while driving. So it was one of those doors that you like, you kind of open it up and then they, it's like the dual doors that open, but they were super rusted through and just had to go. Um, and the same thing happened with the back door, uh, the, the, the wooden one on the side. So yeah, we had to replace the doors. We have this passenger seat that we added in because the bus only came with, with one seat. Uh, and when we were driving together, we wanted it to be safe. I like to cook a lot. So it was really important for me to have a nice spacious kitchen. Um, so there was a big sink. Um, and yeah, like lots of storage and uh, put up the, these hanging mason jars for all of my stuff. This is where I keep my water. Um, it's a really simple system. We tried something more complicated, but I needed things to be just like really easily fixable and as simple as possible. So um, there's like this jerry can and also these, these jugs that you can get at Walmart. Um, so one of them has a pump that here I can like turn it on and show you. So you turn on this pump and then we can run the water and then it just goes into another jug, which is my gray water. So when we got the bus, it was actually completely, it, it was gutted in the sense that like there was no, there were no seats or anything, uh, but we still had to take off all the floors. They were super um, like moldy and everything was rusted through. So um, we, basically took everything out down to the frame and then um, put plywood on the bottom and had to kind of like build it up from the very bottom. Um, so yeah, it's the bus is from Timmins, Ontario. So there was a lot of rust, so we had to deal with some of that, um, but it's it's a lot better now. I have a Camp Chef uh, stove and oven, which is really awesome because um, sometimes you just want to bake in, in the bus and, and it feels super cozy and you can make cookies. And then there's the, um, <laughs> The very dirty oven here <laughs> um but yeah it's super handy um so that's what i use when i'm off grid and then when i'm plugged into shore power i have just a little uh burner that i can plug in this is just a like super simple um fridge that i got from someone was just throwing it out they had it in a as part of like their bar um so yeah, everything was, we tried to do everything super budget and reuse as much as we can, um, like get things for free. So yeah, it uses a lot of power, but it's kind of worth it. Cause I am, I do have shore power. So I stay plugged in a little bit and then um, it's been fine. Even when I've been off grid, it's not too bad. My electrical system is actually kind of um, hidden under here. Um, so there's, just that's basically like an all-in-one system I actually um, we have a, a 24 volt electrical system um, so that all-in-one unit has a 3000 watt inverter um, it has a 40 amp solar charge controller and a 30 amp shore power plug-in um, and it's all super compact so it's like easy to use and then it has a 30 amp or sorry it's so it's connected to my two um, hundred amp SOK batteries that are connected in series um, so it's also 24 volts and then there's like a step down because all of my appliances everything is 12 volts um, it, there's a 30 amp step down to get it back to 12 volts if that makes sense I have 200 amp lithium batteries um, and I guess I should and, and I have 300 uh, watts of solar on the roof so yeah, that's the system I use. Um, it's not always enough for the rainy West Coast days, but uh, that's when I top up with shore power. This is a Chinese diesel heater that I installed under the bed. I have a little bit of a garage space under there. Um, and yeah, it's saved my life so many times. I love it. Um, it's really, really powerful. And when I'm plugged into shore power, I have a space heater, but it's nowhere near as powerful as the, as the diesel heater. So. Yeah, really handy to have. It was really important for me to have a fixed bed because I didn't want to have to worry about, um, you know, making the bed every morning. I do uh, work as a lawyer, so I have really long 
days my yeah I sometimes come back from work super late so I want everything to be just like set up and ready to go so I can have dinner and go to bed um, so the fixed bed was basically the first thing that I was like it's gonna be there and I wanted it to face the back so that I can have nice views when I'm parked up somewhere so yeah that was an easy decision and then um, we went back and forth about whether I should have a washroom or not um, and then decided on a, a little one here this is my little washroom um, there's a really simple system there it's like a bucket with a urine diverter and a compost toilet so um it's basically a yeah like a diy compost toilet i use um potting soil and yeah it's been good so far there's a fan also that uh faces out externally i may get an outdoor shower one day but i haven't felt the need for a shower i have this one um, big shelf that I built for my one suit that I wanted to transport with me from Ontario just in case I need to wear a suit so we literally built the whole shelf just around it or the whole uh, closet just around it um, but it's been actually pretty cool to, to, to keep all of my jackets in there and it's been really handy um, but I haven't used the suit yet so maybe one day um, and then I have these here um, where I just keep all of my bedding and some towels and they they close with uh, these magnets. Whoa, oh, a little crowded. Um, but yeah, they close with these magnets and that holds pretty tight while I'm driving. I just use foam board insulation um, and on the ceiling some uh, rock wool insulation. Um, and the thing is with the bus is that like the windows let out all of the all of the warm air pretty quickly anyways so I don't know how much good the insulation did but I've been okay so far. I'm the kind of person that doesn't really use tables at all i basically like eat on my bed and work on my bed but i figured just in case i needed a table i would just make have like the simplest table set up so um just got this from home depot um and it just like screws right in here but it's pretty handy and then yeah you can kind of like scooch in there and sit and like if you like eating with a table you can do that. This is my bedroom area. Um, it's a full size bed, so um, it works perfectly for me and my partner when he's here. Um, and yeah, it's it's um, high, like it's, it's kind of lifted so that there's this garage area under here and it's where I keep some um, foods, like pantry stuff that needs to be locked up so I don't attract any bugs. Um, and then up here I have basically all of my clothes um, I do, so, so they're all in, all my clothes are in these baskets and then I take them down when I'm driving. The mattress is just one that was given to us by my partner's mom. It was just an old mattress that happened to fit that was in their basement. Um, and yeah, we just framed it out of, again, like old wood that we found. A lot of wood was just like given to us by people who didn't need it. And it was just like old kind of random cuts of wood that we that we made but it does lift so that if you ever need to um uh just work on something under there you can lift it and like stand underneath this was um the wheelchair doors on the side of the bus and they were completely rusted and basically hanging on by a thread we had like taped it together for our first few trips and we're just like hoping it didn't fall off so then we figured it was probably important to replace it before we drove across the country in the winter um, so yeah, we just framed it with, um, aluminum and then put in, um, treated pieces of wood as a frame, um, and then insulated it as well and then put the wood across, um, just outside for the aesthetic. I have this Max air fan here and it's right in the middle, so, um, it's good when I'm cooking. The, the stove is, is right here, so it kind of... Removes all odors. These are just little um, 12 volt pot lights. Um, uh, there's how many? Six of them. Um, and they actually, so there. I have a switch here for the, the bedroom one. So just so that I don't use a lot of power at once. Um, I could just have these or I could just have the four front ones. They're on a separate switch. And then there's the one for the washroom, which I can turn off and on. Um, and then actually for the bedroom, I have little reading lights as well. I live in a van because, oh, there are so many reasons, but I, I really love the feeling of living in a home that I've made myself. I feel like it brings me so much comfort to 
come back to the bus at the end of a long day at work and see like all of its little quirks and obviously sometimes it's a pain in the ass like every van is but um at the end of the day it's it's so worth it when you figure something out and you and you like work on yourself especially because i've been um solo female bus lifing for the past six months um just getting really comfortable with tools and fixing stuff things that um were really really out of my comfort zone um but now i'm just so proud of myself and how far I've come and also obviously the fact that I saved so much money on rent has been amazing uh, living in Victoria and working in Victoria um, it was really hard for me I was looking originally to find a, a place just like an, a normal apartment to stay in um, and it was just super expensive and also almost impossible to find um, so I figured why not try something new it's definitely easier to save money when you're not spending it all on your rent <laughs> although gas is very expensive these days but you can stay put for a little while I couldn't really afford to to get it built um, so I knew that uh, you know we would have to learn and figure it out ourselves um, but also I really wanted the experience of building out a van um, it's something that, you know, ever since I just started thinking about van life, um, I felt like for me, the, the journey of building out the bus would be just as meaningful as living in it. Um, and it definitely was, and it wasn't without its challenges, especially, I think everyone, every couple, especially <laughs> who's built out a vehicle together knows that, um, it can be super challenging. The very, my very first night of van life, uh, the whole water system got all messed up. My water pump died. Um, I just, I didn't know what to do at all. So I just scrapped it all and decided to go with something really simple that I could understand. Um, and that's why I now have just a very easy self-contained water system under my sink um so yeah learning to adapt you have to become resourceful and that's always a challenge being comfortable enough alone in a vehicle in spaces in public figuring out what i need in the bus in order to make myself comfortable and um, feel safe was a really big thing making sure i have like my keys with me while i'm sleeping all the time and like um, being super aware of my surroundings. Um, at first it was a challenge getting myself comfortable with putting myself in uncomfortable situations, but I don't regret it at all. I think it was definitely worth it. Advice that I would give to someone who's thinking about growing into van life would be that there is never a right time. There will never be a perfect time but that doesn't have to stop you from doing it. Um, when my partner and I found the bus, um, it was, I mean, I was in law school at the time, so it technically didn't make sense at all for us to get it. And he was just starting out a business. Like we were, he was, or we were at a place where we didn't even see how we would move into it. We were both living with our parents um, at the time and yeah, it was also like in Ontario when winter was approaching. It basically didn't make sense at all. Um, but we just bought it and thought, you know, screw it, whatever happens, happens. And we started building it out. And then I feel like when you make decisions and move your life in a certain direction, um, everything kind of comes into alignment with it. Um, so, yeah, we just kept working at it, even when it didn't make sense. And then eventually I got my job out here in Victoria and I found a place to park the bus and... Um, yeah, it all kind of worked out, but if I hadn't just taken that leap from the beginning, then I wouldn't have had the bus at the time when I needed it. So yeah, just, I feel like everyone says just do it, but honestly, like there will never be an ideal time. I've definitely learned that I'm a lot more self-sufficient than I thought I was before. It's really easy to lean on other people. And especially when I was with my, like when my partner and I were in here together, um, it was very easy for me to like lean on him for doing certain things and fixing things and then I was thrown into it on my own and I've learned that like actually I can do all of these things on my own too. Anybody can do it, anybody can get into this lifestyle, it's not for one specific type of person. The bus itself costs uh, about $6,500 um, and the conversion I think all in with, so we had a couple of like mechanical mishaps, we needed to replace a fuel pump, which was, ended up being super expensive for some reason, and then um, just a couple of other odd things, and then we also kept the bus in storage for a year while we were building it out. Um, so all in, I think we're at about 
like 15 to 17 K and we really tried to do as many things as budget as possible, but also because it's a really big space, you need a lot of materials. Um, so cost definitely added up during the conversion. I work at full time at just one spot right now. Um, so I basically park the bus in the same spot all the time during the week and then go out on the weekends. And it's um, really nice to have a place that's big enough that it feels comfortable to move around in and I can even like work from home and not feel too constricted if it's a rainy day or something um, I could like I could sit put out a yoga mat here and do some yoga so um, it's been pretty nice to have a big vehicle when I'm less stationary when I'm traveling with it it's kind of a pain in the butt because it's like bulky and harder to park so there's definitely pros and cons depending on um, what you are looking for and because my lifestyle is kind of somewhere in the middle I guess this isn't too isn't too bad my personal philosophy on life would be that we I guess we have this short time to do everything that we want to and oftentimes we stop ourselves from doing things that we are super interested in or passionate about just because of what society thinks or what other people say um, and um, I think what what's beautiful about the van life community and everyone that I've met so far is that everybody's really willing to go outside of what other people expect of them because that's what will make them fulfilled and that's the best thing that they can do for you know the most fulfilling thing that they can do in their lives right now um, and I think that's really beautiful and brave and says something about this community. A lot of people kind of get stuck in a certain lifestyle and a certain job and are scared to branch out of it, um, but there's nothing to be afraid of. I literally work as a lawyer in an office and I still find a way to make it work and I don't know if that's what I'm going to be doing forever, but um, you don't have to be nomadic all the time and you don't have to have a job from the road and I think that's kind of daunting for a lot of people is like well how am I gonna make money well you could have the same job that you have now and still find a, make, a way to make it work so if people want to follow along with my journey um, you can follow me at uh, on Instagram at paxi.the.bus um, and there's some stuff about the builds process and then um, where we're at now. If you would like to be featured on different media, there's a form you can fill out to be on the podcast or to have your van toured. And if you're interested in watching more alternative dwelling tours like this, we upload every single Sunday. So hit subscribe and new van life and chill podcasts every Thursday. Thanks everyone for watching.